right hand side yet again yes he's trying to pressure out the solo lane we've saw him doing in game one and a little bit in game two his goal is to kind of just pressure out snowflake terra oh my god oh, oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> brian codex out here stoling alfredo the support taking down the adc that's gotta be a clip that we throw somewhere man like that this. was absolutely bonkers alfredo not feel the global ult, but she's here despite that. And we might see Apollo oh, able to come as well. Oh, nice. The final basic is Kairos tries to finish it off with the dash, but Fuzzy Clay did this. But regardless, it will be a Primal Fury going the way of Fuzzy and the Wuzzies. And now over 10,000 gold up before 20 minutes into the game. And it wants to be even more important in trying to chase out Kairos. It will be some peel, oh, but Fuzzy. joining in on the ultimate. Gonna force out the ultimate from Kairos as well. And he might just get away, but it forces him to dash into a rough spot. Raijin dashes as well, trying to get damage from the Taiko Drum. So gets taken out before he can get more than one shot off but alfredo finding himself a double kill looking for the triple path near low triple kill coming out from alfredo he's going to look for the quadra getting low here trying to find it onto the artemis but double mumble doing a great job of zoning him out and gets the dash to finish off the kill soul still alive wants to put more damage into this Sobek and he might be able to finish it off and he does four members fall from going ghost only three members on Hello, everybody, to the Albion Giants League week number five. And we got ourselves a matchup here from the Spartans division. Spicy Meatballs versus Dismay. These two may be the bottom two teams, but that does not mean we're not going to have some fun times here in this set. I am Dr. Thanatos, host in this desk. And joining me here is Drummer. Drummer, how are you doing today? I'm doing pretty well. Well, I think we should just jump right into these picks and bans here, get ready to see what happens. And I think the biggest change here is is with this uh, most recent, uh, I believe, uh, patch is just it's just bonus balance patch as a whole. It's just Bumba's uh, spear as a whole has really, really been getting a lot of traction here. And, and just the assassins alone. And then on top of that, some of the hunters. Is there is there any, uh, you know, any particular picks that you see just needing to be out of the way right away that haven't really been a factor these past couple of weeks? Uh, well, as with Uther, the ADC, I'm really liking Uller. Um, just like seeing that classic uh i've seen people play uler with uh, the classic like from a couple of seasons ago just no starter item just tier two transcendence going you know hard to the paint um which i'm always happy to say i enjoy playing uler um some of the auto attack hunters is not as popular recently everyone's kind of in on the uh ability based guys but then uh and a lot of other lanes i don't know if you feel like we're seeing some of the same stuff not like there's bonus balance not too much going on but definitely liking those ability hunters yeah, those ability hunters definitely feeling real, real nice, especially with those, you know, all those buffs, or all those item buffs, <laughs> well, more specifically generated towards assassins, but us dirty hunters like to take advantage of those items, such as that trans being a big pickup there. And I think that Uller is probably something that's uh, going to be really contested here in these next uh, couple of weeks or so. I, I mean, I've had the chance to play him, and I'm not incredibly great, but I feel like I'm just hitting extremely hard and it feels that way with a lot of these junglers as well as well i feel like daji is another character that's been probably is going to get more and more attention due to some of these mages having uh, no cc immunity in that kit oh sure definitely uh i mean i think daji probably like her little teleport ability is probably one of the best you can get on assassins i mean she can use it uh to get back to her teammate like she can do it to her teammates she can do it to an enemy to engage uh, and it does that little bit of damage when she hits on the teammates. It's like a really good ability. I think it doesn't get as much as it, like in certain metas, doesn't get as much love as it could. Yeah, I definitely think uh, with uh, with these changes, as we said, things are going to switch up, but there are still going to be some things that stay the same. And one of those things that stay the same to me is probably going to be the solo lane, considering not much of anything has necessarily changed for the most part. Ardeo getting a little bit of a nerf is, is uh, hasn't really affected her play one bit. Odin just being completely ignored. <laughs> so he's still completely unkillable uh, is what it seems like. And again, Cerberus there 
just being the answer there to the RDO, do you do you do you expect? I mean, yourself, do you do you expect any kind of solo lane changes? Maybe like an assassin solo lane coming out. I mean, I'd love to see an assassin in the solo lane. I like uh, the non-traditional solo laners when they're uh, when they get pl played. It's always a lot of fun to see that. But uh, overall, like I feel like yeah, solo lane is just gonna be solo lane. Nothing nothing too exciting. Yeah, good old reliable slap fest for twenty something minutes, and then they rotate over. And do uh, tons of damage, as it seems. But right. Spicy Meatballs here are going to go right away with that own ban, not wanting to deal with those walls, or more specifically, the unkillable, uh, endless cooldown Odin, as it is. The Tiamat ban here for Dismay here, no surprise there as well. Still plenty of potential from that pick to get that split push kind of potential. And Drummer, I'd, a I'd asked uh, Collision when he was on the desk with us last week, thoughts on Morgan. I'm curious what your thoughts on Morgan LeFay are, considering we got to see it a little bit in that set last week. I'm just, uh, if maybe she's risen up a little bit or she's starting to really, you know, people are starting to pinpoint her weaknesses. Uh, well, I think one of the things, like, if you're comparing her to, like, current, uh, say, like, more meta picks, like, I know Raijin is super popular because he has a great like his teleport ability a lot of people forget that if you teleport on top of somebody there is that brief silence that it does uh like right before it which is just some good utility whereas like for morgan lefay like she has to use her knock up uh to kind of like self peel and she also has like the slow and the fear uh as well but those aren't the longest of debuffs so uh you're kind of a little, a little more reliant on your positioning and your team to kind of help you out there interesting bands here from spicy meatballs taking out this artemis who i'll be honest didn't didn't think would be seeing too much play here in this uh, with this current patch, just with kind of that love of all these more ability centered hunters. But the Persephone to me is more surprising. She's kind of she's had her issues uh, in a in a competitive sense, being comp banned for a while, uh, all over the place. To be completely honest, some days she's available and whatnot, but she's kind of in a spot now with this rework where she's strong, but I don't know if she's still ban worthy in, in that sense i like her ultimate really strong but those other aspects are still kind of lacking where do, where do you lie on this persephone just when you know things like the the raijin here in merlin are still plenty available oh yeah i was gonna say with raijin and merlin available like probably want to prioritize one of those um but again like persephone i feel like she's followed the the same course that a lot of like new characters to the game follow it she's out there opening day she's broken as all hell everyone wants to play her she's banned she's comp banned whatever then they reworked her and i feel like she's now just kind of like maybe mid high mid tier of a character like she's not disgustingly broken like she was in the beginning of her release but she's also not like absolutely useless she's just kind of in the middle so i, I don't know why I would have probably picked like Raijin or, or at least a merlin in that one just because like persephone's good but not like a third ban like make sure nobody picks her type of thing you know yeah the the focus there being you know if you're focused mid lane maybe focus it on one of those more higher end picks but maybe somebody on the side of dismay here has an absolutely ungodly persephone you can't let through but spicy meatball is going to pick up that uler right away and dismay in response are going to hover this rama then i'll lock that one in same with this fafnir both two picks that have been getting a lot more attention here rama is kind of an interesting uh, god here in this kind of meta because he sometimes wants some of those ability items, but at the same time, he's still a basic attack god at heart, which really makes him a, uh, an interesting kind of character. That ultimate can really, really hit for some damage, especially on those, uh, you know, second, third hits. Uh, but I don't know. Interesting to see how this build path will go here for this Rama. I think that might be a big point uh, to look at here across the board but spicy meatballs now going to answer back with a cerberus and a collie of all picks here where i just uh, how does this collie fare in this new kind of assassin centered uh meta as it be uh, well collie i don't know collie is a weird one i personally have never been good at collie so if you're looking for advice of like what build she goes i don't have a clue um all i know is she's really hard to kill so they could be going for that. They could be going for the long, like the long engagement. Send it, you know, Kali goes in, fights a bit, gets low, uses the ultimate, hopefully gets the kill in there on her on her target. Then she's back to, you know, back in the game. Um, Cerberus is a fun one. I'm a big fan of Cerberus. Though I don't know, we have seen Cerberus in solo. So I don't know if this is a support Cerberus or a solo Cerberus just yet. Yeah, I think that's definitely uh, an advantage here in Spicy Meatballs draft. It is that kind of flex potential there on that Cerberus because... 
I mean, we've seen it a hundred times, and we'll probably see it a hundred more times. The Kali paired up with a Kepri, so you have double I'm not dying. So okay. there is a potential that they, you know, Spicy Meatballs pick that up in the second phase. If it gets banned out, no worries. You just send that Cerberus into maybe the support role, pick up a more aggressive solo laner. All all questions that will be uh, <laughs> answered later in this draft. But the Achilles pick here for Dismay, another interesting pick, still... Hasn't really gotten much attention in this past, you know, couple of patches. Really just haven't been doing much. And 8.10 is going to be getting a buff to his three. But again, that's a, a couple of weeks away here. So we won't be seeing anything like that. It, do you think there's any, pers- you know, specific reason to pick this Achilles here into this top three of spicy meatballs? Other, like... Other than as like a comfort pick, as just a, a personal favorite, I'm not sure. Like I personally may love playing Achilles. He's a lot of fun. Uh, but as somebody pointed out on the Smite subreddit, uh, every god since his release has had some kind of slow in their kit, and Achilles himself doesn't, uh, which is just like a fun fact. Um, but yeah, it, kind of a weird one. I mean, yeah, he has his execute, but all three of the characters in Pixel Horror have leaps. So if you time that leap just right, you can just get the heck out of there and not get hit with the execute. Yeah, you make a yeah great point there. I mean, I mean that uh, that execute is usually the you know the the most important thing per se to some people's eyes, and being able to easily <laughs> avoid that with a simple leap definitely uh, hinders that character a little bit. But he is still a lane bully in his own right, and against the Cerberus, you might want to be able to try to fight into him a little bit before he starts getting some levels in that two and start getting that protection shred here. That's uh, uh, I mean, uh, the bands here, gonna finish them out here. Dismay gonna ban out the Raijin and King Arthur, while Spicy Meatballs are going to ban out the Susano and the Janus here. So, a little bit of focus across the board in some different positions here, but mid definitely being the focus. But Dismay here now off these bands are gonna go straight for this Merlin, which I think is gonna have an issue against this Kali, really only having that pseudo, you know, mini dash in that blink which can be really useful but i think this collie can definitely keep on top of him oh for sure and if you if you get any the slightest bit of a of an item that gives you extra movement speed or whatever like you can you can just chase merlin down for days yeah now spicy meatballs here going to be hovering a guan yu which uh still has an answer to me whether the cerberus is going solo or support personally because I still really enjoy a Guan Yu support. And with these War Flag changes, I think that actually helps him a lot keep up with some of that mana issues he may have early. But enough about him. He's he's fun, he's cool. But Vulcan being the last pick here for Spicy Meatballs. And that's, that's an interesting pick. I don't think we've seen this one yet, at least to my uh, knowledge, in, in a set here recently. And... Uh, He's got some damage, but he also has some major downsides. True. Uh, Vulcan, yeah, I don't know. The way I've always, whenever I play against the Vulcan, I know that Vulcan's not going to kill me because he killed me. I'm just going to be annoyed to death by Vulcan because that turret is just the bane of my existence. Yeah, that turret definitely being one of the stronger aspects of his kit, even though if it isn't uh, his most damaging ability, it definitely kind of can be used as a zoning tool to some degree here, but... Uh, Dismay here, going to finish out their draft with a Tsukiyomi, a pick that people have expected to kind of skyrocket up here in uh, popularity with all these assassin item changes and all that good stuff. But instead, he goes here in this 10th pick slot. But if I were, you know, a betting man here, I think I'd put my money on Spicy Meatballs, to be completely honest. I, I think they're they're immobile to some extent, but the second they hit late game, nothing is going to be in their way. Double protection shred is something uh, y- you cannot ignore. But I mean, where, where are you lying on this one, Drummer? Do you think Spicy Meatball's late game protection shred draft has this one? Do you think Dismay is going to be able to just kind of ride through that whole game? I think, uh, like, I would give the... Like, I feel like early, like, Tsukiyomi's probably a little better than Kali. Uh, Merlin definitely a little better than Vulcan. Um... Though I do, it's the Achilles, if let's say it's Achilles Guan Yu solo, that would be an interesting matchup. I think they both kind of, they're both brawlers. They both can definitely go toe to toe. As for duo lanes, uh, that's going to just come up to, honestly, just a player skill because they both, they pick some pretty good characters. Um, 
But like I think I think you're correct. I think late game, yeah, like Vulcan's ultimate does an absolutely disgusting amount of damage. Guan Yu lives forever. Uh, Kali can live forever. Cerberus with his built-in anti-heal is just like at least does have a heal ability. Um, uh, his his buff, uh, so that'll like hinder his survivability a little bit. And then uh, like I think you said before, like Kali can just chase that Merlin down forever. So like early game, sure, maybe just May has the advantage. But yeah, I think you're right. Spicy meatballs probably is playing the long game. Well, will this game go late and spicy meatballs use that late game draft to this advantage or will Dismay be able to get that early lead and push it? There's only one way to figure that one out, and that's to send it to Argent Surge and the Voiceless One. Thank you very much, Dr. Thanatos and Drummer. This is the Voiceless One here, bringing you the match between Spicy Meatballs and Dismay in our Spartans division here in week six of the AGL. I'm joined today by Argent Surge. How are you doing out there, buddy? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. We got some nice rain. We got some humidity outside. We're uh, we're chilling in the nice weather before it gets cold here in a uh, spooky time. What better way to use that nice weather than to ignore it? Stay inside and watch Smite. Oh, yeah, for sure, especially in a game with this... Uh draft that we're seeing here especially from uh spicy meatballs i the kali and vulcan normally aren't seen as that uh high of picks usually kali is if the jungler is really confident and you're looking for the late game uh snowball potential that kali has just to be able to uh kill the entire enemy team but vulcan is a pick that i usually hate to see and even hate more to play against as he's just very hard to lock down and he has very low cooldowns and a lot of burst potential here. I'm glad you said that because I'm also very triggered by this Vulcan pick here. I despise playing against Vulcan because all he does is throw it in his turret and then hit you with his his, his line attack. I think that's his one. I can't remember. Yeah, uh, and then he, then he lets the turret do all the work. Maybe he'll throw out his ult if you try and get away and you haven't quite died yet. But he and Zeus, just there's no aim involved and that just triggers me so much. Yeah, I do kind of want to also point out the Vulcan starter item uh, instead of the Conduit Gem or Sansa Time that we've been seeing a lot of mid laners go more recently. He's going with the Vampiric Shroud. It saw a lot of play at its prime when both uh, mid laners and magical uh, solo laners were, were using it. It's still used very much when you're playing uh, characters like Ardeo and the like, um, as we see a bit of a scrap over Oracles, but ends up being the way of dismay. But uh, the Vampiric Shroud getting nerfed and going to continue to get nerfed here soon. So it's interesting to see that the Vulcan still decides to go this item system and they can make his damage output more consistent like the Sands of Time. Man, that Guan Yu's making me nervous. Just back, man. I don't know why he's still trying to stick around, but it's scaring me. Uh, I definitely agree with you, though. Um, I do like the Sands of Time just a little bit better as a pick. Um, that's just my personal preference. I also like Merlin a little bit better as a pick. So... Um, well, it'll be interesting to see how that uh, that mid lane ends up playing out so far. Um, current moment, very little we know, but uh, Merlin is down just a little bit on health. But that you know that doesn't mean too much. We're only two minutes into the game here so far, so be interested to see how that matchup plays out between Sinek and L Flathead as the game continues. Yeah, I also kind of want to point out that Achilles would decide to go with the beads as a starter relic instead of a uh, blink, which is uh, can be normally commonly seen, or like a shell or something else. Um, where the Saint decides to go uh, the pretty quintessential starter, or sorry, the first relic for teleport. Uh, hasn't been seen as much recently, though. So going that teleport, it still offers the ability to back quickly buy an item and come back into lane as he just did. Uh, but there also leaves something to be desired when it gets a teamfight phase. Yeah, I'm not a crazy big fan. Actually, hang on, Invade coming in here from the Tsukiyomi, trying to find something. No, he will get underneath the tower, so we're all right. What I was going to say is I'm not actually crazy about either Relic here, uh, coming out from either solo laner. The Teleport, I agree, uh, is useful during the early game to kind of gain you positioning, maybe a little bit in the late game to get you um, over to a location quicker. Um, but I just feel like that something else, like maybe a Shell... Um, Maybe an Aegis even would give you a little bit more utility than that, even as a first item. Um, and I'm not a big fan of the beads either because I don't I look at this draft for spicy meatballs and I don't really see any CC that scares me so much. I feel the need to first take a beads as Achilles, you know? Oh, I see some aggression there. Achilles not able to get his execute off. 
the Guan Yu all going to tear him down before he can get his dash from the execute off there. But yeah, that kind of goes to show. I think maybe he thought he might have been going up against the Cerberus since we've seen him a lot more recently in solo and just preemptively went the first relic before going into lane. Uh, perhaps maybe holding on to that until seeing who your lane opponent is and then off your first back getting your relic based off that uh, outcome might have been a better look for him. Um, and now he's kind of paying for that as the beads isn't going to save him from the Kali Guan Yu ults there and he ends up getting cut down before he can even get his ultimate off. It was interesting he didn't even pop beads. He got hit with the stun from Kali and didn't use beads anyway. So now I'm now I'm really not a fan of the pick because the one situation in which it would have been useful, it didn't even get really used here. So um, I mean, people, see... people sleep on the Kali early game damage, but people are sleeping more on this duo side right now as fights continuing to happen. Holy cow, Stellar Dude already taken down on that Cerberus. They're trying to find an answer kill over here onto the invading Dismay, looking for something against this Rama. The knives come out, and that will confirm the kill. Oh, oh coming down from the side of the Vulcan, going to put huge damage onto that, uh, uh, attempting to retreat uh, uh, Kali there, who's a little bit low, but now everybody's going to disengage. The uh, Fenrir will make it safely back on the other side, his own side of the map, and a uh, little, little minor win there for Spicy Meatballs. Yeah, Dismay ends up getting the kill on Distilla, or sorry, Distilla Dude ends up getting uh, killed there, yeah, by, by Dismay's dual lane as they look for the invade, but just not enough to continue to uh, have that pressure push past. The purple buff, had, I don't think, had spawned in at the time, so they were maybe looking for a purple buff invade, it wasn't there, Kali rotates in, they end up just having to retreat, end up losing Ool on the back end of that. Um, it's just kind of... Oh, no, sorry, Ul didn't die there. I thought he did die. My mistake. No, Ul didn't die. Rom died at the tail end of that. There so ends up being an even worse loss for Dismay as they were kind of punished for stepping up too far. That said, Dismay is currently leading in XP, uh, probably gold as well. Yeah, gold gold about 600 in the lead as well. So uh, they have come ahead here, regardless of the slash line, just controlling the camps better, controlling waves better. We did see a little earlier in the game that waves for Dismay mostly push all the way up underneath Spicy Meatball's tower, especially in duo lane. Um, so they're just controlling everything a little bit better globally on the map here, and that is starting to pay off for them with a uh, ever-growing gold lead. It's almost at a thousand now. Yeah, Sukiyomi's just been farming up here. Kali's been looking for fights as so we see a fight in mid lane try to break out the Cerberus. A little bit too late. Fafnir able to, to jump out of that for it. He gets lifted up in the air and taken where he doesn't want to go. But yeah, Sukiyomi's just been hard farming. Now has a, almost a full level lead on the Kali. Has his Jotuns online, starting to go into probably Brawlers, I would assume. That or Crusher is his next item. Um, this is kind of just a different dynamic between the junglers. Some junglers look to go and get a lot of early ganks uh, in the early game to get their team ahead. And some junglers just want to farm so they make those bigger impacts in the mid-game team fights. So it's kind of interesting to see each jungler take their own path, and it's going to be really fascinating once these mid-game team fights break out to see who will have the advantage here. Yeah, we haven't seen all too many ganks come out, or at least any successful ganks come out from the Tsukiyomi, but he is definitely getting value elsewhere. But I'm going to use his ult to jump up in the air, try and get himself some safety. The snipe's going to come through looking for a kill, but it's on the other side of the map where the uh, Achilles is going to get taken down in the solo lane. Counter kill coming over here onto the column. Aries coming in from Vulcan, gonna miss everything, not quite get what he was looking for. That is another kill onto the Uller, and now potentially looking for one more as this Vulcan has entered the fight in the wrong place at the wrong time. Gonna get burned down just a little bit. He'll make it back underneath the tower. So two kills. Whoa! <laughs> and, and Rama dying to the lesser scorpion. Oh, that's just heartbreaking to see. I was about to say everybody from Disney makes it out of this fight. Uh, until they didn't. <laughs> that is just, that is a little bit tilting right there, if you're son of two dog. Um, gotta try and let that not affect your mental going forward, because that's, uh, that's a rough one, buddy. Yeah, Vulcan actually ended up hitting the Rom there and brought him down to 1 HP with the uh, ult as he was rotating into that fight. And I guess Rom just maybe still getting used to the new builds. Uh, that ADCs have been going, the burst that they have and the ability to take down the camps. A lot of or a lot of ADCs thinking that now that they have Boomba's Dagger, they can quickly clear those camps. So maybe he thought he can down that and get some extra XP or extra XP and health and maybe try to rotate back in on that fight and get something more. Uh, unfortunately, he was bested by uh, said Scorpion and that rotation back in never came to be. So it's very unfortunate timing, very unfortunate play by the ROM. But he still has a two-level lead on the Ool now just being brought down to a one level lead 
So, though that mistake was made, still has a level lead, he's still looking fine. And wow, a lot of damage coming out onto this Kali. She's forced to retreat, gets some peel from her Cerberus there. Sukiyomi ult coming out, looking for it, but the unkillable gonna keep her safe long enough to get underneath the tower. Not going to get her any kills though, so she will end up going down. And that is a kill going the way of the Sukiyomi on that gank. Cerberus gonna be pushed back, forced to pack on, back up underneath his tower as well. So Dismay taking the kill lead once again. Um, and I was about to say before that fight broke out that even though we had an even kill line uh, that Dismay had quite a bit of a gold lead built up just from the map pressure they're able to put out. But then they get a kill on top of that, make it even worse as we approach about 10 minutes here. I like that uh, this gold fury is available. I get a little get a little annoyed when we hit, you know, later up into the game, you hit about 15 minutes and either uh, Scorpion has still fallen. Those neutral objectives are online. So I'm glad that that gold fury is online. Give the team something to fight over. Give Dismay... Um, a way to use their advantage to, uh, well, get more ahead. When you're ahead, get more ahead, is the old StarCraft 2 saying. Uh, so I'd like to see a play coming up here around that Gold Fury from Dismay within the next couple minutes. Yeah, the big question mark right now is the soul lanes. Dismay has a level lead everywhere in every role. As we see Cerberus and getting chased down, the ROM made the rotation all the way to mid take part in that fight. It looks like Dismay is looking for this Gold Fury pressure, but Kali... Are you getting too aggressive? Nah, she, she's fine. Um, but yeah, the, the Guan Yu having this 2-0, a level lead up on the Achilles, as soon as he rotates in, this is going to be really dangerous. As a fed Guan, is going to be really hard to kill once he gets on his horse. Absolutely. Uh, just be able to chunk people down, hit the stun with the final strike there, um, just make it absolutely a pain to try and disengage for any sort of fight. And now, uh, turret notwithstanding, there's a huge invade coming in from Dismay. They're going to burn down that Guan Yu and take him down anyway. They do not want him to get too fed. Uh, going to negate that lead before it even begins by taking him out underneath his own tower. They'll strip the tower away, take the blue buff for good measure, and uh, I'd like to see them rotate over and uh, probably start looking at this Gold Fury now as I think you've gained enough of an advantage. You have spread out and taken out enough players from Spicy Meatballs that you should be able to get that, if not for free, relatively easily. Yeah, that was exactly what they had to do, is look at cutting down that lead in solo lane before trying to make any big team fights happen where both solo laners would be rotating in. So that's just a really good play call by whoever is shot calling for Dismay, just kind of calling over saying, hey, this Guan Yu, this, he's going to keep getting bigger and bigger if you leave him be. We have to take him down at least uh, one or two deaths here before we can look to actually do anything effective. And actually, it's Spicy Meatballs here who are starting up the Golden Fury. Perhaps recognizing, uh, maybe got some vision on the fact that Dismay head back. They are completely out of position and using all the ultimates in the bank. Spicy Meatballs will take the Gold Fury before Dismay can even get there. Excellent use of vision and map knowledge to deny an advantage to their opponents and take it for themselves when in all rights, uh, that should have gone to Dismay. Just not quite decisive enough in uh, in taking it. Not, uh, not able to pick it up there. Yeah, if you look at just the amount of wards on the map currently, that <laughs> Spicy Meatballs has almost four times the amount of wards that, that Dismay does, and that's just the, the use of information knowledge you can get by having those wards out. They saw the majority of Dismay had just backed, so they go, hey, we're right next to the Gold Fury, might as well burn it down and get it ourselves. And they do, and they take it away. Oh, unkillable ultimate coming out here from Kali, trying to find what she's looking for, but the jump up from Rom, not going to let that happen. He's able to jump out of the way, dodges the snipes, does Kali, she's going to get away with it. And now the Merlin coming over to rotate will pick up the Uller as just barely getting away is that Rom. He's going to, please don't die to a camp again. Okay, he'll be all right. He'll pick up the purple buff and then probably back. He's scaring me though, man. Yeah, that was honestly a little bit criminal that he got away with his life directly in front of Ul with his full kit up, manages to roll away to avoid the axe, and Ul unable to find anything in his bow stance, ends up getting killed by the Merlin there. That's just, honestly, just a bit of a sloppy mechanics as we see Sukiyomi also get another gank in on the Guan Yu, taking him down another notch, and now Achilles has the level lead in the solo lane. So we're seeing all across the map now, Dismay has this XP lead, and even more so a gold lead, as that T1 has fallen in solo side, and along with just the farming that they've done, uh, returning the Pyromancer for Spicy Meatballs getting the Gold Fury, we're looking at about a 5k gold lead. The item difference is going to start really impacting uh, both teams here. Yeah, especially as you see um, more of those tier 3 items get online. You know, your first couple tier 3 items are uh, kind of natural. They kind of... Um... They build linearly a little bit, but as you start to stack items, your third or fourth item are huge power spikes for you because your bonuses start to stack and then you start scaling exponentially. 
uh, rather than linearly. So your third and fourth item getting on getting those online faster than than your opponent can can make a huge difference in terms of uh, mid game team fights and mid game determines late game. So that's how a game spirals out of control right there. Yeah, one thing I I. I had a bit of a question on. Oh, actually, Wool might end up getting killed here if he's not careful. Rommel coming out looking for the snipes. He gets one, he gets two. That's a dead Uller. Rom gonna throw some onto the minions just for kicks and giggles and continue to take more XP. He's ballooned his XP lead over his counterpart in the Hunter to three levels over that poor Uller. That is, uh, that's a little oppressive. You're starting to feel, if you're that Uller, like you're just not gonna be useful at all in this game. And that, it's really bad when Rom has such a big lead. Actually, it's a bit uh, therapeutic for me is seeing all, how many ools have just been running it down recently in public and queues. Uh, having a ool be down instead of just running down the ADCs, it's very nice. Maybe people can fight into the ools. We see a big rotation coming out on solo side. Looking for a punish onto the invade from this uh, from this Achilles. He's going to use the execution actually just to get himself back in safety underneath the tower. Stygian Torment going to connect, but not going to get any pullback. But the burn coming out from the Cerberus will be enough to finally confirm the kill underneath the tower. Damage done to Spicy Meatballs, but they'll all walk away healthily with a kill in their back pocket over that Achilles. Yeah, they lose T1 and T2 in left side, though, and they ended up having to use all three ultimates of the people attacking the Achilles there. This opens up a door for dismay. They know that a lot of big team fight ults, the Stygian Torment, uh, Guan Yu's ultimate, and the unkillable for Kali ult are all down for the next minute and a half or so. If they want to force anything, now would be the time, whether it's just a fight to maybe look for more pressure, maybe get a T1 tower in mid. They can play aggressive here and try to force something out. I like the idea uh, that I think we're seeing here from Dismay is uh, they're going to pick up some some buffs and then they seem to have kind of congregated around mid lane. Uh, I'd love to see them push down the tier one tower to try and force a fight and capitalize on that lack of ultimates. If uh, if Spicy Meatballs doesn't take the fight, then you take the tier one tower for free and you know you rotate away and maybe get uh, the next Fury, maybe start looking for something around the Fire Giant, maybe something like that. But I do want to see them try and push the issue here in this mid lane just to get a little bit more bang for their buck because those ultimates are coming back online for Spicy Meatballs very soon here. Doesn't doesn't look like they're going to be quite decisive enough to do it before the ultimates come back up. Looks like they're happy to just place wards and take space around this Fury um, and maybe take a team fight uh, around the Fury once it spawns up. Yeah, one relic we haven't seen much use of that they've been holding on to is the Cerberus Sunder. He's held onto that. I mean, he got that first relic, but I don't think I've seen him use it or have any impact in team fights with it. So hopefully I can see a little bit more action as we see a little bit of action going on in this mid lane here edging towards Gold Fury. It's because I feel like this Cerberus has rarely, if ever, been in a uh, an even-sided team fight against either of the tanks on Dismay. Uh, he was involved in the gank against the oh, as we see Dismay starting to pull the uh, the Oni Fury here. Looks like Spicy Meatballs. There is an Uller in the vicinity, but he's not close enough. I don't think they're going to be able to get there in time to stop this. Nope. Oni Fury goes down. Dismay will take it, and they will probably just back up for their troubles. Cerberus on the backside, maybe looking to try and get something started. Maybe a punish here. Not going to get it. He'll be forced to leap away. Flame's going to push him back just a little bit. I don't think. Ooh, Suko. I don't know. Sukiomi ulted. It gets two kills immediately going the way of Dismay as soon as the fight begins. Potentially a third one going to be turned back as this Achilles is very low health. That's a dead Cerberus, and the Achilles is still getting out. I think he will get away with his crimes as the Guan Yu is forced to back. Oh, he decides not to. Thinks better of it. Is he going to go for it? This is, this is like a standoff in a Western. They're just staring there, looking at each other, waiting for one to blink. Yeah, that was just a really... If, if you're Spicy Meatballs, that is catastrophic. That was worst-case scenario. First off, you get zoned out of contesting the Gold Fury by the ROM. The ROM isn't even hitting the Gold We have That's what we have Merlin for. That's what the help's here for. He can he can take care of all the burn. I can just see here autoing at people as Guan Yu almost gets executed. Now Guan Yu's on the tail end here. Yeah, this is very much a Western. The, the underdog and him coming back and dealing more damage than the thought of. And... Achilles end up winning the 1v2. They're getting the kill on the Kali and able to survive to get to his teams before Guan Yu can kill him. That's just absolute worst case scenario for Spicy Meatballs. Dismay now got even more gold lead, have these Oni waves pushing up, that left wave pushing up almost to the Phoenix. They're able to vie for space around Fire Giant here now, and now these power spikes are coming up to the point where they can burn the Fire Giant if they have the advantage. Spicy Meatballs, knowing this, this is going to be looking like a team fight around Fire Giant. What I was going to say earlier is that I think the reason we haven't seen this Sunder much, if any, come from out from the Cerberus is because he was involved in that uh, the gank over against the Achilles. But for most of the game, he hasn't really faced in any team fights 
like straight up against the tanks from dismay and so i just think he hasn't really felt the need to use it yet and that is kind of the danger with getting something that is a little bit situational in your relic is that you're stuck with relics you can't change them later um so sometimes you pick something thinking you'll need it and then you just kind of never do yeah it's even harder because normally if if you can't lock down a specific person you end up sundering the front line and hoping your team can burn them down but with Fafnir, you sunder him, he just transforms. Your sunder dies off by the time he's done transforming. And even if he doesn't, he still has so many movement abilities to get away from you all. And then you can even turn that fight himself even while getting hit there. So you're going to have to need a lot more lockdown if you really want to take use of the sunder here. And love the positioning here from Dismay. Look at them. They're just all bunched up. They've got the zoning. Uh, oh, the no. Vulcan ult. Oh, jump goes in trying to find a kill. Dismay will finally get it. They'll get it using the sniper from the ROM, I think, to secure. But now the team fight is broken out. That's a dead Kali. That's a dead Vulcan. They're continuing the fight. On the backside, there is a retreating player. I don't even know who that is. Guan Yu is going to go down in front. Cerberus is going to get taken down in the middle. And the only one remaining, oh, that's the Uller over there. He's going to get to back. I don't think anyone will be able to punish him quite in time, but four kills and the fire giant going the way of Dismay. Their lead has ballooned to almost 11k gold, and now I think they can take for sure these two T2 towers, probably a couple birds, maybe all three birds to go with it if they're looking to here. They do have the lay, uh, wave pushed up in left side, so that's definitely a viable go for here. It looks like they're getting the T2 a little bit slower in right side, so I'm assuming maybe a Phoenix uh, the wave not really favoring them in the solo lane here, but that was almost really bad for Dismay. The Earthshaker comes in, brings it down to almost, I think, I want to say almost 200 HP there before the Astral Barrage was able to secure it for Dismay. But that, if you're Dismay, you're kind of wiping off a bead of sweat off your forehead going, man, that was, that was dangerous. We really have to be more cautious on picking up these objectives because they don't have to be sitting there right looking at us to, in order to contest it with a, with a Vulcan ult. Yeah, that was uh, definitely very lucky for Dismay that that went their way there. I was I was a little worried when we saw the kind of the double dash in, and uh, then the Stygian Torment and the Vulcan ult both going off there, because Stygian Torment, we often think of it as a placement tool, but you also can't cast or do anything. So they froze, Dis Spicy Meatballs went in, froze Dismay from doing any damage, and then started throwing out huge chunks of their own damage, hoping to get the burst off onto the Fire Giant. They didn't quite get it, but I like the idea there. Yeah, maybe they're thinking it can be a little bit uh, better for them as, I mean, if you look at the, just the XP gap in mid lane alone, there's a f difference between uh, Sinek and L Flathead there. And that's, I mean, that's probably why the Earthshaker didn't do too much damage because Vulcan's not even completed his third item fully yet. Uh, whereas Merlin has almost full build. He's level 20. He's going to get a starter item upgraded. The lead's still massive in dual lane as well, both the support and the ADC having these level differences. Jungle, also a big lead. Everyone on Dismay is just massive compared to Spicy Meatballs. And if you're Spicy Meatballs, you're just kind of praying that you can get people low enough on Dismay for the Kali to come in on the backside and try to wipe up some kills here. Look at you knowing all the names of everybody's ults and stuff like that. I just call them the Rom ult and the Vulcan ult. You know, the, it's called Astral Barrage. It's called Earthshaker. It's so fancy out here. Oh, I, I, it's tough work as we see a fight starting. On... Going to dash in looking for snipes with the Rom ult, that Astral Barrage, but it's actually the the, the two coming out from the Tsukiyomi that will get the final kill onto the Kali and the Cerberus before they can get back underneath. And now it looks like Dismay are going to just try and end. The Vulcan ult going to come out trying to find something. But everybody's able to get away. The Titan's down to about 10% health. And with a final kill onto the Uller, Dismay will take you to victory in a very quick game. Only 22 minutes they come away as your victors. Yeah, Spice Meatballs really needs to go back to the drafting board here. Go or two. Uh, they had a kind of an idea generally for what they want to do with their comp, but... They didn't have any real strong initiators. The only real initiation they had was the Cerberus or the Guan Yu ultimate, but neither of them had blinks. So they can't really get into these team fights very well. You need to have some type of initiation happening on your side. It can't be the Kali. She's just going to die before she can get anything done if she's the one blink initiating. You can see how quick and how one-sided that game was right there. Nobody on Spice Team Meatballs even making it above 10k gold. Well, everybody on the side of Dismay popping at least 12k gold at the minimum so very one-sided very well done there we're going to throw it back over to the desk they're going to break it down for us and we'll be back at you with game two in just a minute don't go anywhere
Thank you, Voiceless One and Surge, for giving us the fun names of abilities and their, uh, you know, counterparts there as well. That was a quick, quick game there, a 22-minute game. And, uh, yeah, Spicy Meeple, I didn't get to late game. <laughs> no, it just didn't happen. Yeah, it just didn't happen, and there was just an, almost no way to get to that point. Only one member on the side of Spicy Meatball really had a chance to do anything, and that was the solo laner. And even then, Guan Yu can only do so much by himself there. Not a ton of CC outside of that ultimate. So if your team's already dead, uh, there's not much you can do in that scenario. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it at least even kind of like we we originally thought that, hey, that late game comp is going to, you know, all these make the late game and they're good. But I mean, they say never kick a man when he's down, but apparently that doesn't apply to the game of Smite because they they took that early lead and they just ran with it and just kept the pressure on and never let up. Yeah, I, mean, I think that's just kind of a, a almost a masterclass per se on how to continue pushing a lead like that. You get a little lead from one lane and you just try to push it to the next and the next, you know, getting consistent invades, consistent, you know, kills. I mean, in that duo lane, uh, son of two dog there was able to get a, a lot, a lot of farm there. Uh, just alone. It was able, it was at least three levels up on that Uller at one point and able to trade just about everybody on that map was able to even take some two V ones there without lifesteal. May I remind you and just going, an interesting build path, to be completely honest. The, the Crusher Trans is not something I think you typically see a Rama doing, but he was doing pretty dang well with that. Bro, because you only see, because uh, if I know Rama's abilities like I think I do, uh, the passive, like the ability you get from Crusher only works with his ultimate. So it doesn't, it doesn't trigger off any of his other abilities because everything he does is an auto attack, uh, like boost or buff or whatever. So it, only affects, it's, it counts as an auto attack. Um, but I mean, it worked out. Uh, like when I saw his build, I was like, "Is he just copying the the Uller build? What is he doing?" And then, then you see dominance come in, and then uh, I think he went rage at the end there. Um, it was just a weird build, but like, hey, the guy made it work. I mean, yeah, those base stats on those items are extremely, extremely well. So you can't really hate on just going base stats and then just relying on pure skill after that to really go from anything like that but i think we're just gonna go into picks and bands here for game number two here and, and i mean dismay here are gonna have the first pick this time around so do you think they're gonna try to run back any of those picks in particular like do you think maybe that rama they might want to get that one right away just in case the you know just in case spicy meatball might want to take that away or maybe ban it in that second phase Sure. I think if you're if you're looking at maybe you know, if you're that Rama player and you're just very, very confident on that character, yeah, you might you might want to just lock it down early. First pick, just get that. If you know you're you're gonna that's your guy, lock it down. Yeah, and locking it down is this Odin locking him out of the game to be more uh specific there. Yet again, a ban here that we're gonna see pretty much uh to the end of time until he finally gets looked at, which uh might be a while to say uh, to say it lightly there, but spicy meatball here. I don't expect their bands to change too much here. I, I expect those bands to go the same. I think maybe maybe their their best route here is maybe to pick up uh, an earlier game uh, jungler per se, as they end up banning the Tiamat, uh, which was in that exact same phase that they uh, or well dismay were second pick banned the exact same thing so you know they're just uh trading places doing the same thing but but do you think an early game jungler would kind of help kick start if they want to continue something like that uh more late game comp they had in game one yeah i think it it depends what you feel if they think that oh maybe we're gonna be up against early game again yeah mix it up with the jungle or pick somebody who's better in the early game you know kali is one of those characters where you have to make it to, I, I've heard the joke, like you have to make it to 15 minutes and then Kali's unstoppable. Uh, but if you just struggle getting there, then not much that you can really do. Yeah, I think that's a, a key point there is just kind of, if you can't get any of the items you need on a hyper carry like that, you, there's there's no way you're going to be a hyper carry. But Dismay here going to go for a Geb ban this time around. And with some of those buffs and that slight change, to his ultimate there definitely changes uh, a little bit of the way you play Geb now being able to actually uh, kill people with the ultimate as well as those Geb shields just continuing to be extremely, 
important in a lot of these later game team fights from the clans and just that health shield. Yeah, definitely. I think Geb is a good one to ban out. He's uh, pretty popular these days, like you said, with the buff to, you know, the changes to his ultimate and stuff. Um, unfortunately, though, I can't see the picks and bans anymore. Uh, we're going to take a, a quick, quick little pause here and just try to restart our system here because it is being rude. But stick around. We'll be right back to bring you the action. hand side yet again yes he's trying to pressure out the solo lane we saw him doing in game one and a little bit in game two his goal is to kind of just pressure out snowflake terra oh my god oh, oh my god, oh my god. Oh my brian god. codex out here stoling alfredo the support taking down the adc that's gotta be a clip that we throw somewhere man like that this. was absolutely bonkers alfredo not feel the global ult, but she's here despite that. And we might see Apollo oh, was... able to come as well. Oh, he my... the final basic as Kairos tries to finish it off with the dash, but Fuzzy Clay did this, but regardless, it will be a Primal Fury going the way of Fuzzy and the Wuzzies, and now over 10,000 gold up before 20 minutes into the game, and it wants to be even more oh, and trying to chase out Kairos. It will be some peel, oh, but Fuzzy joining in on the ultimate, gonna force out the ultimate from Kairos as well, and he might just get away, but it forces him to dash into a rough spot. Raijin dashes as well, trying to get damage from the Taiko Drum, so gets taken out before he can get more than one shot off but alfredo finding himself a double kill looking for the triple fast near low triple kill coming out from alfredo he's going to look for the quadra getting low here trying to find it onto the artemis but double mumble doing a great job of zoning him out and gets the dash to finish off the kill soul still alive wants to put more damage into this sobek and he might be able to finish it off and he does four members fall from going ghost only three members on the side of fuzzy and the wuzzies and, and i gotta say it, it that's all of their ults yeah oh huge oh my god huge. Yes. Oh, let's bro. go my goodness that room did you knock up uh i have it in one Damn, if we were all right, we could do gold. I just killed Matt, too. Kill the, the Bacchus. He jumped? Yeah, nope. he jumped around. Yeah, we don't, we don't have anyone else coming. He's gone. I'm just we can leave him go. Good shit. Oh, 
just supports carrying games. Uh. Geb Sukiomi in that first phase, and then Spicy Meatball is going to ban out the Tiamat Uler and Gilgamesh, and then second phase Cerberus and and Medusa are the bans for Dismay, and Spicy Meatball is banned out the Set and the Fenrir. And uh, I mean, we don't see these picks here, but Drummer, uh, what what instantly uh, gets your attention and, and just kind of gets you uh, excited for this one? Uh, well, the Medusa ban, first off, was kind of strange. Um, haven't, well, I mean, she works well with the ability items, I think, but at the same time, just we haven't, just like we haven't seen her too much. Um, but the uh, the Uller ban, yeah, that makes sense. Got to get rid of him. Or, well, no, no, maybe it does. I don't know. Uller's a good character, but uh, they definitely mixed it up this time. Yeah, um, mixing it up, for I sure. I don't know how I feel about that, a Wheelix pick. Yeah, considering, considering uh, it was picked as early as it was, it's a little bit yeah. confusing per se. Like I, I'm the not only character that can like that can get countered with the, with the ultimate. Yeah, I'm not even a hundred percent that Persephone. I mean, I guarantee Persephone can be pulled by it, but mm -hmm. it's not something I, I've not seen that match up a lot. So maybe that was the thought process: is is you know shut down this Persephone right away, and this Fafnir just falling right into the hands of that Awelix. But drummer. Uh, after that performance of Game 1, do, do you think Spicy Meatballs have made enough changes here to, uh, you know, switch up and, and you know, tie this game up? Uh, perhaps. I don't know. We'll have to see. It looks like we're going to see Xing Ten probably in the solo lane. I don't know if I see... I feel like Athena wouldn't work well in solo. It's possible. Um, I don't know if I, if I would like that... Uh, but uh, with Athena's good, I mean, she has great that global pressure she can create with her ultimate. Um, Shing Ten, a lot of uh, HP five. Heimdall, another good one. But I don't know Heimdall v Chiron. I don't know Chiron might have the advantage a little bit just because he has that built-in healing with his passive. He kind of has a like his ultimate makes him damage immune. Well, not damage immune, but he's effectively immune while he's in the ultimate. He just has to make sure that he uh, doesn't uh, doesn't get killed in it. Um, but I don't, I don't know if it's going to be enough. We'll, we'll have to see. Yeah. And I think, I think that it's interesting to note here, spicy meatballs run it back with the double guardians, but will these double guardians make it to the late game and be tanky enough to withstand the pressure from dismay? And I don't know. I think the only people who can tell us are the voiceless one and Argent Surge. Thank you so much, Dr. Thanatos and Drummer. Here we are. We're back again for game two. It's the Voiceless One and Argent Surge. 25 seconds to go before game two starts. This is Dismay versus Spicy Meatballs in our Spartans division here of Week 6 in the AGL. Dismay has swapped sides. Uh, Spicy Meatball, after that loss, opted to take second pick. So Dismay will be your order squad in blue. Spicy Meatballs in red. Going to be the Chaos team. And uh, before we get going underway with the real game here i want to ask you uh which comp do you like better as a whole here argent surge if you have to pick one um honestly i kind of mirror what drummer was saying on the desk with the wheelix pick being interesting the top pick if you're really confident she's seen as a pretty common pub stomp guide if she gets ahead it's gonna be almost impossible to shut her down however giving up a character like persephone who can do like uh, over a thousand damage in in one instance um, is it's kind of an insane thing to try to counter as well as 
Dismay counterpicking very strongly with the Chiron and the Daji, both of which have abilities that make them knock up immune, which removes a lot of Awelix's abilities to use her ultimate on them. So she's really going to be depending on catching these 1v1s with the Persephone or potentially pulling the Fafnir and hoping to burn him down, or really banking on the Xing Chen Whirlwind of Rage and Steel to give her the knockup she needs to really be effective. This is a uh, Persephone is in a little bit of a same position as the Oelix in that, you know, if she is ahead, then she can, you know, throw out a thousand damage with one of her abilities and things like that. But when when behind, she's not nearly as scary and uh, you can kind of disrespect her just a little bit more as we see the solo lane. Lap box. Wow. Minute one kill over onto the Athena solo lane. As that uh, that Cthulhu will take out exactly what he is looking for. Early kill going the way of Dismay, not looking to change things up too much. Starting out aggressive against Spicy Meatballs once again. Yeah, this is Echo, actually the opposite of, of last game where the Saint had the lead on Pop and Nike in the solo lane at the, at the start here. But the Cthulhu just doing a little bit too much damage over the early game Athena. She doesn't exactly have the same amount of survivability that Cthulhu has. Speaking of survivability, Daji not having that. Wow, in a kill the mid lane. Either direction and just gonna barely escape with her life is that a Wheelix. She just got what she was looking for and will get away with it. As a kill goes in either direction, almost a second one, but Dismay not quite going to pick that one up. And things will settle down just a bit as we head back into lane phase, although these teams don't show any sign of remaining too calm in the near future. Yeah, and looking at the builds here for, for a brief moment, the theme decides to go Boomba's Dagger. I know some soul laners have been uh, going that item, but specifically on Athena, I feel like there's a lot to be desired there. As we see, a, a Wheelix actually coming in for the gank. Should be pretty easy layup kill for him. Yep. And I can feel the second he that I saw that we it was stepping up. I knew there was no way I was going to be able to get out. That's pretty textbook gank. So see, speaking of gank, something happening in dual lane. Oh, going to make it away using the Bifrost Crystal there. Well done from the Heimdall. Going to force the uh, duo laners from Dismay back up just a little bit. Uh, what were you saying about the builds? Uh, yeah, but so the Boomba's Dagger, really good late game because you can go the Boomba's Hammer, which is really strong on a lot of soul laners. It allows you to get abilities out more often. However, on the Athena specifically, it gives her very much a lack of presence in the early game clear and just uh, ability to, to do anything in lane. So going that as your starter item instead of waiting, getting it as a last item once you hit level 20, it's a bit questionable. On the other hand as well, they their Heimdall did not go the Boomba's, uh, sorry, Boomba's Dagger and goes Leather Cowl instead, which was the go-to ADC starter item, but that's fallen off with the rise of Boomba's Dagger. So seeing the Heimdall, which is it hits really hard, going something that doesn't really give him the same amount of oomph as Boomba Dagger, uh, Boomba's Dagger does, is a bit questioning to me. Yeah, um, I personally, and I voiced this opinion here on the AGL channel before, but um, I like that uh, Boomba's Spear has gotten a bit better for Assassins, but I am not on board quite so much with the, the current craze of picking it up on your Hunters, and uh, especially not too crazy about it on solo laners. Um, I know it can be powerful, but I guess solo laners, they can kind of, they can kind of take it or leave it. But the reason I'm not a big fan of it on a hunter is, oh, hang on, dodgy, trying to look for some damage. No, not quite going to find it. They'll disengage. Um, sorry, what I was saying, the reason I'm not a big fan of it on a hunter is because the hunter's biggest weakness early game is sustain. Um, and the, the spear just kind of makes that even more of an issue it doesn't help with that in any way so it doesn't protect you um, from having to back very often um, so if you get punished in that way it's very easy for somebody to pick something else and kind of just win the lane against you using that advantage of sustain over you if you choose to go that yeah i mean I, as a jungle main myself i'm always of course uh, happy to see buffs to to my, my jungle starter items as they've been mediocre at best at times this season but yeah, having that be so versatile to be used in so many different roles right now, it, it, it's a bit of a struggle because suddenly you have echoes of the start of Season 8 where Mannequins was just super broken and everybody was building it, and then Boomba's Hammer was super broken and everybody was building it. So it's a very delicate balance that, that they're trying to, to make with the starter items here, especially something that does what Boomba's Hammer and Boomba's Spear does now. Um but besides that point of balancing questions, it's 
really going to be interesting to see these dual or these ADCs go up against each other in the light game with these uh, opposite builds here to see who will really reign supreme in the uh, Boombas versus Leather Cowl starter matchup. Yeah, I'm definitely interested in seeing how that plays out. I'd like to see the game, obviously can't control what happens whatsoever but if i had my druthers i'd love to see the game just be as even as possible so we can really get a better idea as to uh you know wait what build is really superior here in terms of these two starter items but we'll have to see how the rest of it plays out another gank coming in over here in the solo lane gonna use the dash Ooh, not quite gonna connect with the knockup that's rough i do think that means especially with the pop of the ult that is gonna mean that this cthulhu should be more than safe to get out here although He's actually going to use that ult to just get a little bit aggressive, throw some damage down on his opponents before he backs up. Yep. Disengage is now going to back away. That was actually a really smart blink out by a Wheelix there as a uh, dodge he was coming in with ultimate ready. And going the blink instead of the beads makes uh, Wheelix very susceptible to the dodge pull out ultimate as it might be forced out here as a Xing Chen whirlwind of right getting used. Is Daji able to dodge that? I think she's going to get cut down here though. Oh, gets taunted back in, but then going to use the teleport, jump to an ally. I think that's going to mean she'll be... Oh, the dash coming in from the Athena, going to dodge out the spear. And yeah, that dodgy will make it out with her life. Very well played there. Love the positioning from the Cthulhu to give the dodgy a place to jump to. Yeah, that's that's the good thing about the dodgy trickster. Is you're able to just... Even if it's just a minion, you sometimes you're putting face rubbing against a wall, just praying that a minion manages to get close enough to teleport away to save your life. But really good communication by the teamwork and teamwork there by uh, Dismay to make sure that Daji gets out safe and sound. Speaking of safe and sound, Heimdall barely getting out without Chiron. Oh, oh. no! <laughs> no! Another kill by a camp. That's the second one in two games. Oh, that's so sad to see. And both of them have been on Dismay. That's both, both times it's been a Dismay player getting killed by a camp. Oof. Man, I, uh, I think Spice Meeple might have slid some of the jungle camps at 20 before this game started and be like, hey, why don't you hit them a little bit harder for us? So bribes, can we get a bribing scandal investigated, please, against the jungle camps? I don't know. I, I saw them talking with the refs earlier. I think they they're might be in collusion. Huh? Who knows that? Well, she is back from her unfortunate death now, going to get that speed camp and go back to the gank life. Um... I think there's been a decent amount of pressure put on by Dismay kind of across the board here. I I don't have any particular lane that I'm like, you know, I really like to see the jungler spend more time there because I just I just think Daji, you know, uh, Magnetic Excalibur doing a great job of making his presence felt everywhere across the map, making making sure nobody on Spicy Meat Bell feels quite as safe as they'd like to. Yeah, we see potentially a purple invade going up, not, not, not happening as Heimdall. <laughs> continues to walk his way towards gold tree this is a really weird dance that's happening where the adc is rotating around the support the sports rotating around the jungle and the jungle is going to draugr now clearing the green buff it seems that everyone just changed roles all of a sudden for a few minutes there but this chiron has a three level lead almost purely on farming alone on the heimdall and that's a really dangerous thing to have just without having any deaths so you have a completely neutral slash line and you're down that much you're going to be needing your uh, Owelix to come in and gank and try to get you back into this game because she's been spending a lot of time over on solo side and Cthulhu still has a lead over the Athena. Using that lead, using map control, lack of vision from Spicy Meatball, Dismay will take that Gold Fury for free. So that right there can show you the power of wards with a little bit more vision onto that Gold Fury. May have had a chance to contest as there were a lot of people in the duo in mid lanes just didn't rotate over, weren't close enough to make a difference as we see an invade coming in here over the top of this blue camp, and it will actually be taken by this Cthulhu. He'll even use ult to throw down some extra damage. Now that he's got what he's looking for, maybe forcing some people to, to look away or back up, maybe. Big damage coming out. Wow, you're actually going to force the dash away underneath the tower. And now Cthulhu is out of ult form, but he's surrounded by all five members from Spicy Meatball. This is a little bit dangerous. I think he may have stayed too long here. Going to get knocked up, thrown back underneath the tower, going to dash to a teammate, and actually using the p damage from the Persephone, it's dismay going to come away with a kill here but now that is a very out of position uh and a very dead uh Persef she's gonna go down just outside the tier one tower so a kill is answered back for spicy meatball just positioning not quite good enough there after the Persephone picked up the kill but in return Chiron gonna steal away this purple camp as he takes down the tier one tower and continues to push his advantage in the duo lane Honestly, I feel like Spicy Meatball do end up coming away with a better trade there. Cthulhu ends up surviving there. Persephone falls, and Persephone had a lead and had it 
that's a pretty good bounty for Spicy Meatball to get, especially since Morgan Le Fay was the one who actually got the kill credit for that. Um, the Heimdall has been down. Killing him doesn't really give you much, and Chiron made the really smart play of just continuing to push. Ends up taking both the T1 and the purple buff invade away from Curious Coats. So now he's playing with, with literally nothing. We see Chiron pushing his lead even more. Oh my goodness. Four level lead, and he'll actually just straight up get it. The solo kill is all his, using the abilities and the lead that he's gained so far. That's gonna, though. that's gonna extend his lead even more so. He does have an invade on this Awelix, but he has two levels up on the Awelix and is not afraid of her whatsoever. Oh, no. Going to use the three to dash forward, gets the kill onto her. That's a double kill. Actually puts uh, Chiron onto a killing spree, but he gets two all by himself over here in the duel lane. And now teammates have even rotated over to help just a little bit more. He's going to use the dash to get himself away. Whirlwind of Rage is still going to throw him backwards, but the Daji is here to provide support. They're going to turn it around, try and burn down this Sting Chan. He will go down. That's a third kill going over the way of dismay. That's, wow, getting aggressive. The Fafnir are going to dive underneath the tower looking for a little bit more. On a sliver of health, he escapes, and three kills quickly go the way of dismay. That was all Chiron in that fight right there, just making it happen. And now is oh, five levels ahead of his counterpart in the Heimdall. That is just sickening. And that was almost shades of panda cat honestly we saw it with some the you know the 1v almost 1v3 there uh unfortunately flathead takes a bit too long of a path in trying to go the long way on purple buff to get behind the chiron um but yeah that that's both just mechanical play being really strong by son of two dog but also just that the level leads coming into play there just being able to talk about so much damage we see damage coming out by the dodge now she's running for her life get the kill onto the Awelix, now has to back out. She's very low, but teammates are here to help. Gonna look for a little bit more. She's actually going back in. Gonna use that ability to teleport, get a kill onto that Tick. Morgan the play, but she will get killed by tick damage in return. Very well played from El Flathead to get something in exchange for his death there. Now Cthulhu has transformed, looking for more damage, gonna push players from Meatball back underneath their own Phoenix as they look to maybe get something against this poor, Poor Xing Chan, only level 8, going to be pushed back underneath his own tier 1 tower. And now the disengage comes through. They're going to be happy with the kills they've taken away, and Dismay will disengage. They now have a uh, fix and a half, almost 7k gold, up on Spicy Meatball. This is starting to look a lot like game 1. Yeah, we haven't actually even really addressed it yet, but... The uh, Gold Fury had already fallen for Dismay here. The next Fury about to spawn in as the Oni Fury. This Chiron is completely just having a fr the freedom of all of Gold Fury's side of the jungle to himself here. He's dashing at people without fear and nothing's going to happen to him. He's able to walk out completely fine at almost full health. He's 1v3ing and he's just fine because he's just, he's so, I don't even want to call it fed. Because it's not like people have just been dying to the Chiron. It's just the superior farm and the camp control has been so good that he can go anywhere he wants. He's insanely ahead. Even using the ult, trying to pick up some additional kills on the fleeing members oh, of Spicy me Meatball, not quite going to get it. But they'll content themselves to back up. They know they've forced a few players from Spicy Meatball to heal, and that, that, that new Fury is almost up, so they'll probably just rotate over there and take that without any con any con contest coming through from Spicy Meatball, because what are they going to do? Ooh, the ult looking for the pal to pull people back in. They will get it. No beads available, and that's a dead Athena. Now you're definitely getting that, uh, that Fury. Or you can take Fire Giant, I suppose. It's very early, but you can try. I mean, you already have such a big lead. Chiron almost being bested by Primax. He needs to play carefully here as Morgan is around. But I think, yeah, with the, with the rest of his team right behind. But they're yeah, going chase down here. I think she might as well die. Yeah, she's going to have to use ult trying to get some life steal. She will eventually get taken down. But now on the backside, Sing Chan going to try and punish this Chiron for staying too long. Not quite going to have the positioning he needs. Chiron will get out. And now they could probably be able to punish and get another kill onto the Sing Chan. He's only level eight. Oh my goodness. He is almost half the level of the Chiron on the other team, and he'll go down as well. I mean, I understand that supports lag behind, but you you never want to be half the level of somebody else in a game of Smite. That's just bad. Yeah, that's freaking being down. Yeah, Oweelix down and out, being sent back to base the expressway by Persephone there. If you look at the level leads across the map, it's not even that insane. It's not completely unfightable on individual bases. If you're looking at the jungle leads, only one. Looking at the mid leads, only two. Looking at support leads, only two. But the solo and ADC gaps of five levels each is making such an impact in these fights. It's bringing them so much presence and so much pressure that the other players on Dismay, even without having such a major XP lead, have the gold and just the presence of mind to run down Spicy Meatball. 
Swiss Weevil needs to somehow put brakes on Dismay's Snowball right now, because if they don't, this game's going to be done in the next five to seven minutes. I think if I'm in the shoes of Spicy Meatball right now, you need to set up an ambush. You need to have three or four members minimum waiting around a corner um, and just gank somebody who's trying to rotate too aggressively out of position and you get yourself a 4v5. I think that's your best way to come back in this here uh, because any form of extended 5v5 team fight will inevitably go to Dismay just because of how strong the solo and, uh, and damage dealers are on Dismay. Yeah, and uh, honestly, the only person who I've noticed that's been really that out of position on Dismay has been Magnetic, uh, Expigalibur, or Sonic on the Persephone and Dajis. They make very aggressive plays. You just have to leave at 1 HP, but the peel from the Cthulhu has been coming through. The peel from the Fafnir has been coming through. But yeah, if they are able to hold a corner ambush one of those two characters, not only can you get potentially a lot of their relics, but also their lives, and that'll be a huge XP and gold boon for you and your team. Yeah, I think that's just because the lead is starting to snowball so much for Dismay. I think Spicy Meatball's best chance, maybe only chance, is to blow somebody up before that lead has a chance to make too much of an impact on a longer extended team fight. You need to kill somebody like in the blink of an eye and then use that 4v5 to snowball yourself into a better position later on. Or I guess draw yourself back into the game more so is what I should say. Big gank on for Jing Chen here. Going to try and use the Sunder combined with a Whirlwind of Rage is still going to throw a bunch of players back underneath this Phoenix. Not going to result in anything but a dead Ching Chong, unfortunately. Now there's Fafnir transformed as well as the Cthulhu both pushing up forward underneath the Phoenix, looking to put down more damage. And that leaves the back line free. Look at them. They're not under any pressure whatsoever. They'll just casually take down the Phoenix while their two frontliners push all of my Speedball back underneath into their own, uh, into their own fountain. And that means now with the Fire Giant buff, they're probably going to rotate through. They'll grab this Tier 2 tower pretty much for free. I don't see Spicy Meatball coming out here and trying to contest this in a meaningful way. They actually will attempt to throw a little bit of damage over onto the... Uh, wow! Persephone. And just like we were talking about, Persephone positioned a little bit too aggressively. She will get punished and taken down for that. They'll get the Tier 2 tower in return. Um, but that's a flub. That is a win for Spicy Meatball. Um... Because that's what you need. You need counter kills to pull yourself back into the game. And uh, giving them the opportunity there was a bit too aggressively positioned uh, Persephone. Yeah, I mean, it is what they need to do. But there's still a 13k difference in gold alone. If you're just looking at pure item builds, uh, Chiron's going into his fourth item here. Uh, Heimdall has, has gotten his T1 on his third, so there's a full item difference in dual lanes, a full item difference in support. There's a full item difference in almost every single role here. The only one who's really even right now is the jungle builds, and that's just because Daji hasn't backed yet, as we see an engage going on in the left Phoenix now as well. Oh no, make no mistake, that that kill does not equalize things. It simply gives uh, Spicy Meatball a little bit of time here. Although time, that they will immediately lose because they lose the Awelix, and now the Cthulhu is going to transform. He's a little bit low health. You may be able to burn him down if you focus him before he can get back to his team. The Phoenix is now down. That leaves the rest of Dismay easy, able to push up and put more damage onto the members of Spicy Meatball. Taunt comes through. Most of the members of Dismay are quite low here, and the ult coming out from Morgan Le Fay going to make that even worse. This is going to be uh, Dismay retreating, possibly losing some members in the process. They have stayed too long, I think. Well, yeah, that Cthulhu will get out, but he will have to exchange the Fafnir to get himself away. If you were going to lose somebody, you are okay with it being your support player, uh, rather than your extremely fed solo laner, but uh, but yeah, that's, uh, that's painful, just sticking around a little bit too long there if you're Dismay. But I mean, that said... They're up to 15,000 gold in the front. They can they can afford to make some mistakes. Yeah, but that was so... Honestly, that was a really good frontline play by Aichi there to substitute himself for Pop and Nike Me. Uh, Skithula going a little bit too deep and being 1 HP getting chased on by the entirety of Spicy Meatball's alive players and somehow managing not only substitute his spots with him but also pull all the aggro away from the 1 HP Cthulhu. That's just really solid frontline play, and that might just also be spicy me not wanting to push too far outside of their Phoenix line and just trying to take what's directly in front of them. But now both of the side Phoenixes are down, and so this next Fire Giant should essentially be free for Dismay. Uh, if I'm them, I'm just taking my time, getting my items online, getting my XP lead from, from clearing my camps, and just waiting for this next Fire Giant, getting that, and then continuing to push down these Phoenixes now that they're going to be at their weakened state. Um, if also though, if we look at the player damage, the Morgan Le Fay has been doing a lot of damage currently on the 13k, just barely having more than, but 
she hasn't been getting almost any help for anyone else on her team here. The next closest being her Athena Solian at almost what 7 8k below her player damage uh spicy meeple needs to be able to find some damage elsewhere that is the problem with a uh, god like morgan Le Fay. she and merlin share a similar problem in that they can throw out amazing poke damage all day but when it comes to securing a kill they really need their team to be there to help can't do it alone as dismay will take the gold fury they'll get that for free uh, Fire Giant is up in 30 seconds. I think Spicy Meatball rotates over and will look to take that. Or sorry, Dismay will rotate over and look to take that. If you're Spicy Meatball, though, I don't think you can let that go for free as, ooh, damage being thrown out. But you can see just how tanky that Cthulhu has become, that he can fight on his own for that long and still be just fine. Uh, I don't think you can let this go if you're Spicy Meatball. You, you have to push out the waves as much as you can and then be there because, like you said, uh, Phoenixes are already down. Um, they may not even bother with mid phoenix. You can just get the fire giant and then run down into the throne room and kill the titan with the with the buff that the fire giant gives you. I think just because of how far ahead you are, if you're dismay. Um, and so I like that spicy meatball are here. I don't want to see them let this giant go for free. I don't uh, though. At the same time, if they they might be able to just delay or try to look for a defense. Here. I mean, if you look at the support, he doesn't have an item yet. He only has Thebes and Pridwin online for the Xing Chen. So he is as squishy as possible to this now level 20 Chiron here. I think your best option is to try to hunker down and keep them outside of your base. Maybe look for a light Phoenix defense and then a hard defense on the Titan room if that doesn't go well. But uh, you're really playing with, with, with straws here. You don't have much going at all. So I definitely think... Just trying to hunker down is the best option for them currently, this but hunkering down is not going to be safe though. enough. Yeah, this is what I'm afraid of. They just, they take out the Phoenix, it just melts like butter, and now you're inside the Titan room. You can poke at it and prod at it. Sure, Spicy Meatball can throw some damage at you here and there, but you're so powerful with that Fire Giant buff on you. Yeah, the second somebody steps out too far, you lock him down, you kill him. That's a dead Athena. Now you snowball that lead. It's a four versus five. You could probably even just ignore Spicy Meatball and burn the Titan down here. But I think Dismay are feeling good about themselves. They'll look to gain some additional kills. Play it safe. Whirlwind of Rage and Steel going to come out there. Grab a couple. Throw them back in. But they should be okay. No, actually, that is a dead dodgy. They'll exchange it for a Heimdall and an Awelix, though. And that means the rest of the players on Dismay. Fafnir falls. Three remaining here alive for Dismay. The Persephone and a couple damage dealers. They're not able to actually finish off the Titan. So I eat my words. And the Titan defense is good for Spicy Meatball. I think they will just, just be able to hold on here. Yeah, that sovereignty came online for Xing Chen just the dismay maybe looking to still try to come in. They don't they are I don't think they can do it. I mean they're they're gonna try, but I don't think they could do it. That Chiron is so incredibly low. He needs to back now or he is just going to uh you know stagger a death timer and that will put uh, dismay on the back foot coming up in future fights. So yeah, they need to get out. Yeah, they use so much dismay used so much there at the start of that in kill the saint on the athena there i think persephone alt plus uh fafnir alt plus chiron all used up just to kill the the athena and that left them with nothing else for that team fight spice meatball able to use uh, cause some breaks slightly by staggering the engage and the titan continuing that proct and unproct to keep its health up and then the really big Xing Chen ultimate throws three people into the into the Titan room that leads directly into the Morgan Le Fay uh, triple fear. And that just caused so much damage to be outputted. Heimdall managing to send some or dying gives them an extra kill. This was all a very good defense all in all by Spicy Meatball. Yeah, just heroic coming out for them there to keep themselves in this game. Um, I, I really thought that that was going to be over once the Fire Giant was taken and the throne room was breached, but the defense coming out there doing amazing things and as we see highlighted by our observer the bumba spear has come online for that chiron so he is going to be incredibly dangerous right now um unfortunately my request was denied we have no idea whether this leather cowl is able to stand up to the bumba spear because uh, the heimdall is not even close in terms of power he's he's a full item behind and a level down still yeah, and this mid Phoenix probably soon to fall here as they're pushing into it now. This is probably going to be the last fight of the game, depending on how it goes. I think if uh, Dismay wins, it is definitely game over. Spicy Meatball wins. They have a long way to go to him, bring themselves back into this. But with the death of the Heimdall, things are not starting out well for them. Very low health. Now this uh, Wheelix going to get burned down as she attempts to dive the back line. Now that Xing Chan is locked down, he's going to die as well. That is going to be it, folks. There's two remaining here for Spicy Meatball. They will not be enough to prevent this Titan from going down. The Athena is going to dive in, use a taunt to try and get something. But look at how low that Titan health bar is. He will die. 
spicy meatball going to unfortunately lose a second one and dismay will take this one two games in a row as they are your winners today Honestly, I just I feel a little bit bad for Flathead. They're putting up 25k damage, far exceeding anyone else in the lobby in damage. There's a 6k difference between her and the Cthulhu, who is second highest damage in the game. If you're Morgan Le Fay, you're not feeling that bad about your performance in that game. You did all you really could. You made a big impact while having such a level deficit and a build deficit. Um, but at the same time, the order side team here just came in. They out farmed, they out team fought. They overall just came in with a game plan and stuck to that game plan. There were a lot of really great individual performances, especially by son of two dog and Papa Nike in that game. Number two, look at, look at the damage. That's insane. Nobody else on the side of uh, spicy meatballs, even cresting uh 10 K damage. Well, El flathead is at 25. I mean, I think you're right. I think he sits back in his chair and he goes, man, I did my job today. I don't know what else to tell you guys. Uh, because most respect in the world, El Flathead playing out of his mind there, the only one on his team even managing to have a uh, a positive KD flash line. So um, well played from him, well played from both teams, but unfortunately the team coordination and synergy, the drafts all coming together to make it a uh, uh, dismay victory here. Order squad going to walk away with the win. We're going to throw it back to the desk though. They're going to break this one down for you. That's going to be it from us here on the casting desk, but we'll see what the desk has to say. Thank you, Voiceless One and Argent Surge for two excellent casts there across the board. And I think the biggest takeaway we can get from this one is simply match your Guardian in solo laner skin. Right. Yeah, it was well, pretty funny. In all reality, I think it does come down a lot to just Dismay being able to play their game better it is kind of just the the easy and uh, re real on the nose way of, of saying it but they really were able to just do what they wanted to do oh for sure i like i, I mean obviously i said in the pregame i didn't i really thought that athena was going to be their support uh unfortunately it's athena solo i mean love athena she's a great character but i think athena support is really where it's at uh her starting with the the bumba's starter item was also very strange i, I mean like I kind of understand I guess, the thought process behind that, but I don't know if that was really the, especially for an Athena, I don't know if that was the best choice. Yeah, I, I mean, late game, you're definitely never going to hate on getting that Bumbus Hammer, but if, if you really want to go that route, you might want to start a Fighter's Mask to really match up with some of the clear, especially against a Cthulhu, who has some pretty good clear early. And if instead you put the Ching Chang over there in the solo lane, I think you just have a nice, uh, good matchup of two tanky <laughs> guardians that are just healing endlessly, and and nothing really happens. But again, we gotta we gotta give props to Son of Two Dog for really kind of just running that duo lane both games, both on that Rama as well as that Chiron. Oh, definitely. That I mean, Chiron was uh, just he wiped the floor with him. I mean, I, I don't want to be rude, but like, dear God, you know, he was unstoppable. We saw him chart, use his dash, it, go in one v three. Just didn't care. It was like, yeah, you know, what? I got this. We're fine. Yeah, just build the Jotuns and then just run it down. That's pretty much his entire game plan there as well. But you can't forget about those double guardians there from the support and solo and like Cthulhu and the fact they're matching the skins as I uh, very uh, well, as I mentioned and very much needed to mention because that definitely played a key factor in their success. But both those guardians able to give a lot of room for the entirety of dismay and especially even uh, let the Daji there get some uh, well-needed damage and things like that, even though she she may have not been doing the greatest early, at least in terms of not being insanely ahead like some of the rest of Dismay was. Yeah, but I think in the end it worked out. Like, whoever, well, as I was watching this game, the whole time I was thinking is I was like, who who shot calls for Dismay? Because they, they need, you need to buy them drinks after the game because uh, they had just such good coordination now throughout both games. Yeah, the coordination definitely a key to Dismay's victory there. But that will be all for us today here on the cast. But do not fret. We have more games for you to watch here tomorrow at 7 p.m. EST, the exact same time. Just tomorrow, have another set for all of you to watch. And you know what? You get some fun bits here too. You get three of the four people from this cast going to be on that one. I'll leave that one as a surprise 
to you so you can, uh, you know, have a little bit of a game there, figure out who went where. But I have been Dr. Thanatos, joining me here on the desk, drummer, the absolute legend, even if he can't predict a solo lane versus guardian matchup. But also, shoutouts to Voiceless One and Argent Surge for a great cast there. And of course, Narwallaby doing the production, doing all the good, lovely management things here for all our casters and getting through those technical difficulties. But again, that is all for us today. Make sure you come back same time tomorrow, 7 p.m. EST for another set.